Okay, hello everyone. This is Victor Momo. In this video, I want to talk about the unique function. It's unique, yeah, and um, the filter function. Just a use case that uh, makes use of both of these functions to get the results. So um, let me quickly just describe the scenario I have here. So I have a YouTube channel, and um, what I have now is a spool of um, you know viewers, you know, from my channel or the views from my channel, if you may. Right. And what you can see is that um, you have the dates and you have the person who viewed. If you look at this list where well, you know I'm a wrestling fan, but that's a story for another day. Their location, gender, you know, donations and all that. So, of course, you have scenarios where, you know, one person views a video more than once or maybe 10, 15 times. So let's assume this is just a list of all the views. But rather than getting too excited that I had 1000 views, which doesn't necessarily translate to, you know, 1,000 people. It would be nice to know how many unique views I actually had. So, okay, fine. Even if it was viewed 1,000 times by how many people? Because as you can see, the big show viewed it, you know, twice, right? So, what I would have done if I needed to solve this prior to Office 365 was to come up with a very interesting formula that would look something like this which I used to like back in the day because it was like a very good mental calisthenics, uh, just exercising, you know, the brain muscles and developing capacity to build this kind of formula. But if it can be easier, I'll take that option. So now let me show you how to solve this now. <laughs> Some of you probably already know this, but I'll just progress from like simple to slightly difficult and I'll end the video there. So what we just need to do here is just to use the unique function. The unique function is aptly named from an array or from, you know, a range. It just extracts for you the unique items. That's all it does. So you don't need anything complex. All I need to do here is just to put the unique function and select my range. Okay. You can decide to lock it if you want. And you press enter. If you press enter, this is just in one cell, but because the result is going to go to a couple of cells, which we now call spilling, once you press enter, then the result spills. So long as you don't have any obstruction, so if I don't have any text here, it will spill accordingly. If there's some obstruction, it will give me a hash spill error. Okay, so press enter and you see your unique list. Okay, you can see that we have 16, whereas here, we had what 48 okay so that's just a simple way to get you know the unique um, in this case you know subscribers so i know that in reality i actually have you know just 16 subscribers so now let's take it a notch further what if i wanted to know how many of my subscribers you know donated above hundred dollars how many unique subscribers donated above hundred dollars okay so um, i have this threshold cell here so i just put the hundred in there now, I'm going to delete this and then recreate the formula. The good thing about, you know, this um, new dynamic arrays is that the formula is really just sitting in this cell. When you go to the other cells, what do you notice? You notice that the formula is grayed out. So the formula is really just in what? Cell H5. Meaning that once you press the delete key here, it deletes the entire array or the entire range. Okay, you don't need to select all and delete. Okay, that's fine. So now what we want is a unique list of uh, subscribers who donated above hundred, you know, dollars, right? If you think about this prior to now, how would you have solved this? This is really just an advanced filter problem. Just quickly select a cell here, Alt Alpha Quebec, Alt AQ. You have the advanced filter dialog. Back then, what would I have been able to do? I could copy to a new location, and this is the key here. I could say unique records only. So those two are what have been combined into these two functions. Unique records only is your unique function. You know, filter whether to um, you know a new location is really just your filter function. Okay, so the filter function works exactly you know in the same way. So what I'm going to do first is to use the filter function. Then I'll just put the unique around it. Easy to use filter function. The array, okay, that's the range, the result I want to return. I know it's going to be my subscribers, okay? That's where I want it to, first of all, return from. The next thing is include, include what rows, include what cells. This is really your criteria. So all you need to do here is just to come up with a criteria that returns either a true, false, or a one zero. Based on that, 
the filter function would exclude some cells and include some others. So the, the criteria is very simple. I just want to check that what donations, select that control shift down, is what greater than what hundred dollars. That's all I want to do. I don't need the if empty since I don't have any blank cells. Okay, once I do this and I press enter, this gives me a list. It's more like just filtering to a new location. Gives me the names of all the folks, you know, who donated above what hundred dollars. But what you realize here is that you have duplicates, right? So this is not a unique list. It's just a filtered list. So all I need to do here is just to put, you know, the unique around it, right? And once I put unique here, I then have, you know, a trimmed list. Don't forget the first time it was 16. Now they are just what eight of them who donated above hundred dollars. The good thing about this is that as you change this, you know, it can adjust accordingly, right? Okay, so that's the good thing about it being dynamic. You don't have anybody um, giving you above 200. That's why you have the hash calc error, okay? So that's how, you know, that would work. So let's take it one step further. Uh, we'll do that on this sheet. Okay, so now what we've been able to do is we've been able to get a unique list of subscribers, first of all, We've been able to get a unique list of subscribers based on a single criteria. So what if we had, you know, two more than one criteria? So in this case, what I want to do is I want to see a unique list of my subscribers based on a threshold and based on location. OK, so what I've done here is just to include, you know, my location in my drop down here and then I can change that accordingly. For this, I'm just using, you know, the numbers. So how do we go about this same way? This is really just like what? Filtering. You want to filter where the threshold is above 100 and where the location is what? Helsinki. That's the first case we want to do. So I'm just going to do filter. I'm going to select same. You probably already know this by now, right? Now, include in my criteria now, there are two things happening here. What's the first one? The first one is that let's take the location. The location f4 is equals to whatever i have in here right so that when that changes it adjusts that's one you know that if you evaluate this is going to give you true false true false true false you probably already know that okay that's all of that Control z then the threshold so i'm doing a multiplication there just to say it is what it is an and meaning that it must be what in Helsinki and at the same time greater than hundred dollars. So I'm going to do greater than here. Okay, so that's your and operator here Right and once I have that I close Okay Oh, it gives me an ash calc Does that mean that there's nobody in Helsinki greater than hundred dollars? Let's see. Let's change this to one that I know do 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 parry Okay, so it's what it is. So it was right. Okay, nobody in Rio. Okay, so London. So the only thing you might not want to put in there is probably to put what? Maybe an if error, right? In the event that it doesn't return anything. Okay, so now this gives you, you know, your uh, filter on multiple criteria. So that's London and $100. It says... Just um, real mystery and big show. The only thing we need to do here is just to add the unique so that it's unique. Because now this is just the filter in itself. Okay. Right. And those are the two folks. You can easily do that by applying a filter here. Alt A T. Right. Then we just do location. We just do London. Right. And we just do here greater than 100 so number filters greater than 100 just to convince yourself okay so you can see those were the three entries but uniquely they're just two so right clear the filter okay so good so now what if we wanted to get let's take this back if you remember when we did Helsinki we didn't have any entries for Helsinki and $100. What if we wanted to find 
a unique list of subscribers who were in Helsinki or who donated more than $100. Note this is a different problem. Initially, we are checking that they were either they were both in Helsinki and they donated $100, and meaning that both conditions must be satisfied. But in this case, I'm saying is what is an or. So they could be in Helsinki, they may have donated less than 100 that's fine. Then, you know, they could also not be in Helsinki and they donated more than 100 you know. So it's in this case, it's an or. How would you do that? Very simple. All you need to do is rather than use a multiplication here as your operator, which does an and, you just do a plus, which is saying this or this. So what it's going to give you if you evaluate that, let's take this whole section and press F9, right? It's a 101001, which is like a true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, and then you press enter. So in this case, it's saying that yes, even though I don't have anybody who is in Helsinki and at the same time donating above $100, but when I do an or, you know, I have a couple of candidates. So you need to understand the problem you are trying to solve and how you go about it. So if it's an and, you use a multiplication for the criteria and you're fine. If it's an or, then you treat it as that. So this was just to show you, you know, the unique function, the filter function, just maybe an interesting example, simple case. And you can build on this, you know, to, uh, to get, you know, more, solve more complicated, you know, problems. There's a second part to this where I feed this unique entry into, you know, um, a drop-down list, a data validation, you know, and I'm just going to show you some new feature of, uh, you know, Office 365 with that. Okay, so thank you for watching. If you like the video, hit the like button. You can subscribe to the channel. And like I always say, if you can think it, Excel can do it. I'm out.